are the team in charge of Next Gen Tech Labs expansion. So thank you all so much for being here. Next Gen Tech is excitedly um, expanding. Um, we've had so much growth over the past decade um, in the East Coast, but we are, you know, we've decided that as the technology space is evolving, um, now is the time that we kind of want to shake up um, our strategy. And so we're planning on moving our headquarters and building our warehouse, um, as well as our data center for our technologies. 44% of Alabamans have ac access to low price internet, but this means that over half um, of people in these black belt regions are people without fast internet. In order to bring Perry County into the digital fold, it's not just about technology or money, it's about making sure digital literacy is emphasized in the solution and that community-based approaches are also emphasized. To cater to the needs and circumstances of the two demographics that we we're trying to reach out to, working class and high school students, the time horizons will look a little bit different but just note that the program is the same and will achieve the same result at the end of each timeline. Some of the faces of Perry County include people like Charlene Johnson and Damian Hendricks. In order to incorporate human-centered design and thinking into the core of our solution, it was important that we focus on these unique people and their stories. Workers like Charlene are the backbone of communities and companies, so our success as NextGen depends on hers. By investing in the youth, we are proactively developing and ensuring that we have a skilled workforce that can um, work for us at our development, at our warehouse, or at our digital center. So we're being pre proactive with um, the labor force that will be graduating over the next five to nine years and beyond. So while we have a lot of the program planned out, we want to make sure that we give the proper time and resources allocated to see success for our company in this county. Okay, let's move right into financing and funding. What we envision for this is a kind of a two-part structure that goes internal, external, and then develops into a financing model. Now, as far as the sustainability and scaling of this, we envision a reinvestment model where the actual metrics used to track this are a portion of the company's revenue is then put again back into the program to ensure its longevity over time. Our mission is not only about investing in education, but also the future of this community. We are confident that our program will not only empower individuals like Charlene and Damien to embrace the digital world more fully, but also align the long-term profitability object objectives of our stakeholders and the communities we serve. Thank you for your support and we are open to any questions. Thank you so much for all of your thoughtfulness that went into your solution. So just to give a quick addendum of our presentation, we'll first introduce the problem to you. Then we'll talk about people who might be affected by this uh, these problems. So what we want to do is really tackle different parts of the digital divide. Firstly, we want to tackle access to the full range of computer skills. And secondly, we want to tackle access to stable and reliable internet connection. Now let's really dive into the back end that's driving this offline module. So here we have some technical concepts. This would mean an incredible return on investment because technologically skilled and educated workers typically produce over $70,000 worth of labor per year, which, mean, which would mean over $350 million in returns for quick data, as well as a huge amount of resources, success, and generational wealth being able to be built for these rural community members. And now so we want to take all of this back to the beginning, which is human-centered design. That's really the whole point of this presentation. And so we want to take into consideration the different user personas that we previously talked about and how that informed our prototype. So here's an example of what the scholarship might look like or the cost breakdown of it. It could fund uh, $1.5 million to fund 25 students in an Alabama college. Uh, we would also have different sample selection criteria and benefits for people in the scholar who has received the scholarship. I'm very pleased with your presentation. You really did a comprehensive look, and I love the mapping of the personas to your technology. 